Hey folks, I'm Spencer and on today's episode of Cult Mania we're going to be looking at a self-confessed grim fairy tale see what you've done there Oz Perkins, Gretel and Hansel If the title of the film didn't give it away this is a retelling of the Grimm's Brothers fairy tale about two children lost in the woods who stumble across a house run by a witch who then wants to eat them but it is a modern, reworking, postmodern inflected... You know, you know what happens these days when people get hold of fairy tales. They have to do like a weird version, or a sexy version, or a dark version. This is like the dark, arty version of that story. In this version, Gretel is played by Sophia Lillis, the breakout star from IT. Basically, in this version, her mom can't look after her and her brother Hansel, played by Samuel Leakey. She basically tries to pimp out her daughter, and she ain't too happy about that. So basically, they're kicked out, left to roam around in the woods, trying to find someone else to look after them. After a few misadventures, they stumble across the witch's house, and the witch is... Pretty chill with just letting two kids come in and live with her. Which, you would already go, that's, that's alarm bells. And actually, yeah. Things start to get really weird. I mean, Gretel's pretty much like, this isn't going to work out very well from the start. But then she starts having nightmares, and things just get progressively worse. Careful with that, dear. I'd hate for you to start something you can't stop. Now that is pretty much the story of the fairy tale. And I wouldn't say that plot is something that this film is massively interested in. It is generally, you know, it, it, there's, there's meat been added to the original story. But I mean, you know, don't expect huge plot twists and, you know, an in-depth story. There are some very interesting ideas, and I think I've not read a lot of people discussing the story or narrative particularly, but I do think the film is very aware that it is a classic folk tale being retold, and it ties its narrative very much to that. There are lots of points where people are telling stories, those stories evolve, change, the meanings of those stories sort of are brought forward, and I think that's very clever. Tell me the fairy tale again. It's too scary, you know, start seeing things that aren't there. I also think Rob Hayes' script is very clever in how it uses dialogue. It doesn't go for a sort of ye olde English, like, dialect. People aren't going thou and thee and doth and all that sort of stuff. They are speaking in the way that I am speaking to you now. Except the syntax of how they speak, the, the structure of sentences, has that sort of old-fashioned style. And I think it's a little weird to start with, but I think it works really well because it keeps the dialogue accessible. There, were, there was like one scene where I was like, hang on, I didn't quite catch that. And that was more to do with like a weird echo than the actual dialogue. But it's still, you know, it's not like, you know, something like a Guy Ritchie, like when he did King Arthur and it was all like Cockneys walking around. It, it, it's got a place in history without having to have really complicated, difficult dialogue. You've been turned out of your home. Set out to fend for yourselves with only your clothes and your hides. Now, for a film that isn't particularly plot-heavy, the performances are really, really solid. I mean, this is... There are other characters, but for the most part, this is a three-hander between the witch, Hansel, and Gretel. Alice Krieg was picked for the witch, and she's a perfect choice for it. She is really, really good because she, like, from the second she's on screen, you're like, you're creepy and I don't trust you. But there's always that thing of, like, she's just nice enough that it's both creepy and quite inviting. You can understand why the children would be like, yeah, I'm happy to stay in this room with you. 
and I'm not saying this to be mean. She really looks the part, which I know is through makeup and hair and stuff. But like, she walks on screen and you're like, yeah, I can definitely believe that you are a fairy tale witch. Now, Sam Leakey as Hansel is really good because in this version of the story, Hansel is much younger. He, I, I, I'm rubbish at judging ages. He's probably between like 10 and 8. And I mean, he handles all of it really well. The, the main thing is, like, he's sort of just forced to be following Gretel around. She doesn't want him to be there. He's meant to be sort of annoying to her, and you get that sense very well. But I was, I never found myself, like, thinking, God, I just want you to die, or anything like that. I was happy being in his company. He didn't annoy me, but I got that he was annoying in the story. And I think that's a really difficult balance. But, I mean, this isn't going to come as a surprise, but Lilith as Gretel is the, the standout performance. She's been brilliant in everything that I have seen her in. Here, she manages to both feel mature, but she's still got this sort of childish streak to her character. Every scene is just pitched at just the right level. And like I said, the, there isn't a huge amount of dialogue. A lot of... She gets a lot across in her face. She has a very cinematic face, which sounds ridiculous, but I don't know. She's so well suited to strange, horror-y films that I just, I really hope she stays in this because I think, you know, she's a proper horror star and I just want, I just want to see her in more stuff, to be honest. I'm hungry. I'm hungrier than you are. Because you're a pig. <laughs> You can't talk about Gretel and Hansel without talking about the film's visuals. That is because this film is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, you only have to see, like I saw one frame of the trailer for this and went, I, I want to see this. The film is shot in a mixture of, the opening scenes are in 239, and then the rest of the film plays out in 155, which is quite strange. It adds this very claustrophobic atmosphere to the film, whilst also gives it a very traditional feel. It has this almost sort of... It lends itself to the sort of storybook connection that our brains have with fairy tales. There's a lot of really good focus work. There's a lot of sort of central framing. It almost has this sort of horror Wes Anderson vibe to it, and I think that's really important to why it just manages to balance being a fairy tale and a horror film and an arty film. It all just works. There's a lot of great colour use in the film. There's a lot of very warm oranges. That's the sort of predominant colour. It's very autumnal, but that allows sort of really bright, piercing blues and reds to really stand out. There's a really striking use of white in the film which caught me off guard and again sort of leans into this just out there weird vibe that the film has. Also the like production design, the set design is fantastic. The Witch's House is this triangular jet black very modern looking building but then when you go inside, it's got this very traditional vibe. And then there's this one very anachronistic, strange set as well that I don't want to spoil too much of. This is the thing. Everything sort of feels... You think you're in one place and then just something... There's some sort of curveball, something, like I said, anachronistic that just pops up out of nowhere. And it really does give the film a very singular look and, you know, there's a lot of juxtaposition, there's a lot of reversal and that it comes from the narrative but it's propped up by the set design and just how the film looks and I think that, that cohesion is really important. There's something wrong here. But it's so pleasant. The juxtaposition <laughs> continues with the film's score. Now, I was expecting very much a sort of Mark Corvin discordant strings affair, but it isn't. 
The score was created by Rob, who did the score for the Maniac remake and probably to most people's ears, Revenge. And whilst this isn't like as pure sort of synth wave as those scores are, it is still very, very much synth based. There are elements of sort of gothic folky horror in the score, but they run through a synthetic lens or ears, whatever. Like, there are strings, but it's synth strings. There are voices, but they are edited electronically. And it shouldn't work. It should feel really, really weird because you're looking at these very traditional folky images. And then you've got synth, so it's weird. But I think because of how it matches up with the set design and the whole just sort of like I keep saying juxtaposed, but it is. That vibe really, it just really works and I'm very excited to keep listening to this score. Gretel, there's a storm coming. It probably is worth saying the film isn't very scary and I think that is perhaps a part of why people haven't taken to it. I mean the reviews for this especially user reviews, are not very good at all. I think it, it's not trying to be scary. It's not a poo your pants up. There's like one or two jump scares, but I don't think it is going for flat out horror. It is a fairy tale. Being told in a dark style, it reminds me more of a sort of Del Toro film, and I say that coming with the utmost praise. It, and it's a very weird film. It's a very surreal film. That's where the emotion comes from. It's it's just about being off kilter, about being a, a little unsettling. And I think it is a very emotive film. I think there is a lot of mood and a lot of tone. It's just not necessarily scary. It's more just odd. And I think if you can get on the film's wavelength, there's a lot to enjoy in that. But I do understand not many people seem to be getting on that wavelength, so I might just be a weirdo. I do want to moan about the fact that you can only get this film in the UK physically on a DVD. Because I'm the sort of person, I have to buy things. I have to own them. I don't like street like, I'll use the streaming service, but I don't like paying for a download. And... I'm just, who thought, no film should only be coming out on DVD in 2020, 2021. I mean, it does the film no favours. The one thing that is unanimously adored about this film is how it looks. So who thought, yeah, just blurry standard definition, that'll do. I mean, it's ridiculous. It put me off buying it for a while, because I was like, well, perhaps they'll bring out a Blu-ray, or it'll pop up on Netflix, and I'll watch it in 4K, rather than from me DVD. I mean, it just, it surely has not helped the film at all. Also, this is possibly the worst DVD case ever. I mean, it tells you that you can recycle the film inside. I'm like, that, that doesn't make me think this is a film I'm going to want to watch. I mean, it's like the bendiest DVD case ever. It does not make a very good impression. But despite the DVD box trying to tell me to throw throw this film in the bin. I don't want to because I really, really enjoyed it. I think it's it's really great. To the point that if they did put it out on Blu-ray, next week, and I only bought it about three days ago, I would buy it again to have it look better because, I mean, it ticks all the boxes for me. It is It is a very me film. It's got great actors, people I really like. It is a stunning film. Even in blurry vision, it has a very, very, very good soundtrack. And I think there is a lot there is a lot to unpack. It isn't just visuals like a lot of critics have said it is. There is more to it under the hood if you can get into it. But even if it wasn't, I mean, it looks great. I don't understand why we have to divorce plot and imagery in films. You don't do it with anything else. I've seen a lot of people comparing this film with Robert Eggers' work 
And, you know, the folk horror aspect, the funky aspect ratio does sort of point you towards that, but I think if you're going into it thinking that's what you're going to get, it doesn't have the sort of tone of dread that those films have. It is much more just odd and arty. It, it's very singular. It very much has a vibe of just being this film. And... I really like it sort of borrows elements that you might recognize but it's brought them into being just it and I like that it's really made me want to check out more Oz Perkins films because they all seem to be very divisive and if they're anything like this then I definitely want to watch them I just think if you like your cinema weird if you like folky stories if you like fantastic cinematography if you like sort of horror adjacent work that sounds really stupid but it, it, it's just it's really hard to compare it with other things um if you've liked the trailer and you don't mind a film that's not like a pulse pounding thrill ride i'd check out gretel and hansel it's it's very interesting and i think i think it's going to get more of a reputation the longer it is about but I understand that I'm in the minority in thinking that. But that is just my opinion. Have you seen Gretel and Hansel? What did you think of it? Let me know down in the comments. Like and subscribe so you don't miss any more videos. And I shall see you next time.